Good day everyone! In this video, we will discuss about sequences and series. Sequence is a succession of numbers that follows a pattern. Given for example a sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on and so forth until 2n, each element of a sequence is called a term. 2 being the first term will be denoted by a sub 1. 4 being the second term will be denoted by a sub 2. 6 being the third term will be denoted by a sub 3. And so on and so forth up to 2n which will be denoted by a sub n which what we call the general term. Moreover, if a sequence has definite number of terms, we called that sequence a finite sequence. On the other hand, if a sequence has indefinite number of terms, we call that sequence infinite sequence and is usually ends with an ellipsis. Let us consider these examples. Study each sequence and determine whether it is a finite or an infinite sequence. Moreover, determine the missing term in each given. For the first one, notice that the first term is 3, the second term is 6, the third term is 9. Observe that the pattern is adding 3, meaning from 3, the next term was 6, wherein we have added 3 on the first term. For the third term, we have also added 3 on the second term, so it became 9. Therefore, to find the missing term, we need to add 3 to 9, which will give us 12. Moreover, the sequence is finite with 6 terms since there is no ellipsis at the end of the sequence. Moving on to the second one, the first term is 64, followed by 32, then 16. Notice that the pattern is dividing by 2. 64 divided by 2 will give us 32. 32 divided by 2 will give us 16. Therefore, to get the missing term, we need to divide 16 by 2, which will give us 8. Moreover, since the sequence has an ellipsis at the end, it implies that the sequence is an infinite sequence because it means that there are a lot of terms after 2. For our last example, the first term is 1 followed by 3, and then 9, and 27. Observe that the pattern is multiplying by 3. So, 1 times 3 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. Hence, the missing term is equal to 27 times 3, which is 81. Finally, since the sequence has an ellipsis at the end, this sequence is also an infinite sequence without last term. Sometimes, sequences are represented by a formula, and you can determine its terms using the index. For an instance, using the formula a sub n equals 2n plus 1, it can generate terms of the sequence by substituting the index on the formula. For example, for the first term denoted by a sub 1, we can solve this by substituting 1 to the formula giving us with 2 times 1 plus 1. Simplifying 2 times 1 will give us 2 and 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. Therefore, the first term of the sequence is 3. The second term can be solved by substituting 2 to the formula and giving us with 
a sub 2 equals 2 times 2 plus 1. 2 times 2 will give us 4 plus 1 will give us 5. Therefore, the second term of the sequence is 5. We can have the third term by doing the same process using 3. So, a sub 3 is equal to 2 times 3 plus 1. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1. That will give us 7. Therefore, the third term is 7. And of course, for the fourth term, we will have a sub 4 is equal to 2 times 4 plus 1. 2 times 4 is equal to 8 plus 1 will give us 9. Therefore, the fourth term is 9. You can do the same process for the other terms. Therefore, for the first four terms of the sequence, we have 3, 5, 7, and 9. An ellipsis here indicates that the sequence is an infinite sequence. Let us consider these examples. For each given formula, determine the first four terms of the sequence. For the first one, we have the formula 3n minus 2. To find the first term, substitute 1 to the formula. So we will have a sub 1 equals 3 times 1 minus 2. 3 times 1 will give us 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. For the second term, we will substitute 2 to the variable. So we will have a sub 2 equals 3 times 2 minus 2. 3 times 2 will give us 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. For the third term, we have a sub 3 equals 3 times 3 minus 2. 9 minus 2 is equal to 7. And finally, for the fourth term, we have a sub 4 equals 3 times 4 minus 2. 3 times 4 equals 12 minus 2 is equal to 10. Therefore, the first four terms of this sequence is 1, 4, 7, and 10. For the next formula, we have 2 raised to n. So, to solve for the first four terms of this sequence, we will be substituting 1, 2, 3, and 4 to this variable. So for the first term, we have a sub 1 equals 2 raised to 1, which is equal to 2. For the second term, we will have a sub 2 equals 2 raised to 2, which is equal to 2 times 2, that will result 4. For the third term, we have a sub 3 equals 2 raised to 3 which is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 that will result to 8 and finally for the fourth term we have a sub 4 equals 2 raised to 4 which is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 which is equal to 16 therefore the first four terms of the sequence are 2 4 8 and 16. Series is the sum of the terms of a sequence denoted by S sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus and so on and so forth plus a sub n. Therefore, to find the series of a sequence, we simply need to add the terms of the sequence. On our previous example, the sequence is represented by the formula 3n minus 2. Moreover, we have solved that its first four terms are 1, 4, 7, and 10. Therefore, if we will add these four terms, then its sum will be called a finite series denoted by S sub 4, which is equal to 22. S sub 4 meaning series of 4 terms because we have added 4 terms here. So this number will be changing according to how many numbers or how many terms you have added. 
Also, a series being the sum of the terms of a sequence can also be denoted by a sigma notation. S sub n equals the summation of a sub k where k is equal to 1 up to n. Going back to this example, if we will represent this series by a sigma notation, we will have S sub 4 equals to the summation of 3k minus 2 where k equals 1 up to 4. Meaning, the value of k are 1, 2, 3, up to 4. Let us try to solve some examples. Evaluate the summation of 2k wherein k is equal to 1 up to 5. To evaluate this expression, remember that sigma notation implies sum. So what we need to do is to substitute 1 to 5 to the variable k in this expression. So we will have the summation of 2k where k is equal to 1 up to 5 is equal to 2 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4 plus 2 times 5. Notice in each term that we have substituted 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 to the variable k in this expression. Therefore, the number at k indicates on what term you should start and the number here indicates on what number you will end. Going back to this, we need to simplify each term giving us with 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 5 is 10. After this, we need to add these terms, giving us with sum of 30. Therefore, the summation of 2k, where k is equal to 1, up to 5 is equal to 30. For our last example, evaluate the summation of k squared minus 1, where k is equal to 1 up to 4. Looking at this and this, we need to substitute 1, 2, 3, and 4 to this variable k here, giving us with 1 squared minus 1 plus 2 squared minus 1 plus 3 squared minus 1 plus 4 squared minus 1. Notice that we have substituted 1, 2, 3, and 4 to the variable k in this expression. What we need to do first is to simplify the squared terms. So we need to simplify 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, and 4 squared. It will now give us 1 minus 1 plus 4 minus 1 plus 9 minus 1 plus 16 minus 1. Then, let us simplify the terms inside the parentheses. So, 1 minus 1 will give us 0. 4 minus 1 will give us 3. 9 minus 1 will give us 8. And 16 minus 1 is 15. Then, after this, we simply need to add these terms, giving us with a sum of 26. Therefore, the summation of k squared minus 1, where k is equal to 1, up to 4 is equal to 26. I hope that you have understood the lesson. For the next video, we will discuss about the arithmetic sequence and series. Thank you so much for listening and see you on our next discussion.